and gentlemen, welcome back to the Cats and Balls podcast. Uno, dos, tres. Hey, gracias, Betty boy. That's it, everybody. That's it. That's the guy. That's Ben Castro, the producer of Florida's favorite hockey show, Cats and Bolts. This is season two, episode number two. I'm Rod Peterson. She is Serena Taylor. And here we are with, uh, as I say, Florida's favorite hockey show broadcasting from Podcast Junkies here in beautiful downtown Boca Raton, Florida. And Serena Don, this is a program today that I am calling 10 Burning Questions. Entering the NHL season plus leftovers from last week. How's your week been? I just want to know before we get down to business here. Pretty good, actually. It's good. been busy, but good. I'll take it. Okay, good stuff. Right. So 10 burning questions is what we're going to do. Ben's going to start the clock when he's done admiring himself uh, in the video there. And we are ready to go. Uh, are you ready with 10 burning questions? I was born Number one, ready. are you ready for training camps to open? I'm it's a, what do you call it, rhetorical question. Are you ready for NHL training camps? Yeah, I mean, I guess. I'm not specifically opening up a training camp myself. But, yeah, I think I feel like every year, the seasons, especially since COVID, I feel like the seasons get closer and closer together. And I feel like this one just ended, though. I mean, obviously, I'm still emotionally scarred and will be for decades to come. But I feel like it literally just ended. And now, all of a sudden, we're opening up training camps again and talking about the rookie showcase and everything. Yeah, well, we're going to hopefully get George Richards in here from the website Florida Hockey. Now, he's been invited, let's put it this way. But I've been reading his stuff this week. And uh, by the way, he lives down in Miami-Dade. And he's like, if I'm ever in Palm Beach County, I'll get up there. But it's a long ways for him. But he said, you know, this is the shortest offseason in Florida Panthers history by virtue of a Game 7 of a Stanley Cup final. So I guess it is, and I see people complaining about the short uh, offseason, but I look at places like Calgary and St. Louis and places that didn't make the playoffs. They haven't been playing since April. That's a very long, very long offseason. It is, but regardless of how far the Panthers went, the off-seasons have been getting shorter every single year. Mm -hmm. Even before COVID, teams were playing for the Stanley Cup in the second week of June. They were wrapping things up. Back in the 70s, they were done in the second week of May. <laughs> so everybody's, you know, everybody has their opinion about it. But like I said, since COVID, it's like they've been trying to play catch up on bumping the seasons and all that kind of stuff. But I think they're back on track now. And yes, it is tighter, but... That's that's yeah. what happens. Yeah, there's a whole lot of whining going on just in society overall. But I saw people complaining mightily in August that they miss hockey. And I'm like, chill out. The hockey people need a break. Uh, football has a six-month offseason. The National Football League has a six-month offseason. And you don't see them bitching. So I'm ready to move on to point two. Perfect. Okay, point two. Will you be going to the NHL Southeast Rookie Showcase? That was a question that came in last week. It's not in Fort Myers, Florida this year. It's in Nashville, so we can stroke that off. That's a big no. However, I guess if Nashville was a little closer, we would go. If it was in Fort Myers, we would definitely be going. Um, kind of wish that we were. I, w I wish we were going over there, too, because we had so much fun last year. Like we talked on the show last week. We had some, you know, Barry Trot stories and whatever else. It was just so great to see these guys playing at that level. It's a different mentality there. Nobody's playing for money. Everybody's kind of playing for a showcase, right? A spot on a team. There were a lot of good athletes out there. Probably some players I thought would put out a little bit more than they did. But it was just, I wish it was back here again. Uh we're going to be following it this weekend, and I'll say this from a Panthers fan perspective. I can't speak for the Lightning, but we were with Doug Plagans last year in Fort Myers, and he was broadcasting the games at FloridaPanthers.com. So you can watch. I mean, which is it's going to lead into my next question here is in terms of how much stock do you put in it. But what's interesting to me about this is I have a, a personal friend there, Jaden DeRoe. He was drafted five drafts ago by the Lightning, but has yet to play an NHL game. So when you think about it, he's like 23. That's a long time to wait. Even though he's not the first guy to do it, but you look at Bedard going in at 18 and a lot of these other guys at even 19 and 20. So they're not all kids is what I'm saying in this right, tournament. Right, right. Well, DeRoe was injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? No, he should have so, played. But. Absolutely. <clears throat> but that is that is a good point. It's like I said last week, you're going to see players of all ages yeah. that come out there and like, I don't know, it's just good. It's just fun to watch hockey where players are just playing hockey. Nobody's 
There's not a lot of fans there. The fans are there just kind of cheering on their team, but it's not this big production like an NHL game. It just reminds me of when we grew up. Yeah. If we wanted to go over to the rink and watch a game without there being a big production about it, we could, and that doesn't really exist anywhere down here anymore. That's the thing with the Rookie Showcase. It's just hockey. Another reason why we like it. But moving on to question three. I don't know if these are actually burning questions, but they are at least questions. Do you care about the preseason? Because uh, we're just coming out of the NFL preseason where I saw a lot of people saying, ah, oh, NFL preseason doesn't mean anything. Uh, I find it all very interesting. If you only care come regular season, that's your right. But don't take away my love of preseason games because I really do. So for the purpose of the National Hockey League, how closely do you follow preseason games? Not really. I don't necessarily love the preseason. It's like the same people that say like, oh, I'll watch baseball in the playoffs because there's more intensity around it. That's why they like it. But for me personally, I'm not obsessed with the preseason in any sport. We drove over to Fort Myers to watch the Blue Jays last year, and we got to see mm. a couple stars for a couple of innings. You know, and it's just different guys throwing on the mound. They go through a pitcher every inning. It's like, it's not really. It's nice to get out and watch baseball, just like it'd be nice to get out and watch hockey. But in Canada, you will not be able to find a ticket for a preseason game. They sell out, and the fans go berserk just as if it was – uh, Stanley Cup uh, and they playoff. charge regular season prices in a lot of ways, yeah. too. Uh, not Oilers $700 a ticket, but certainly hundreds of dollars for tickets for NHL games in Canada, preseason games in Canada, which is insane, which reminds me this will be now the fourth season that I've covered the Panthers or follow them. Remember when I first came down here and the preseason was on and I said, do you, how are these games not on TV? <laughs> It's just rookie, rookie mistake, Rod. It's just one of those things that I think I've lived in the U.S. for so long that I've adapted to the way it is. And the first time my parents ever came to visit me, my dad, it was in the middle of January. My dad's like, this was in California. He's like, Serena, like there's no hockey on here. Like he just can't wrap his head around the fact that when you turn the TV on, you have to search for it. He doesn't get that. And I think I've just gotten so used to it that I don't even think about it anymore. And it, it's it's getting worse and worse on how often and where you can watch the games. So the regular season games, so preseason, forget it. Well, but again, you can watch the streams at floridapanthers.com. So again, I, I am into the preseason. I'll be watching who scores and who doesn't, which actually rolls into point four. Ben, I want you to clip this. Eight players... Last I counted, gone from the Florida Panthers from last year. Very early on in preseason, uh, sorry, in free agency, we knew it was Ryan Lomberg, Brandon Montour, Anthony Stolarz, uh, a lot. Now, Nick Cousins went to Ottawa. We're still waiting on Kyle Pozo. Vladimir Tarasenko signed in Detroit. Serena, eight. You understand, that's almost half the team. How much do you think of an impact of a factor that'll be on the Panthers this year? Well, it's like we talked about last week. Everybody was pissing their pants last year when the same thing happened. It There's obviously a game plan. It, they're not going to just unload all these guys. Whatever. There's a reason they signed Tarasenko and Ocposo. The reason was, one, to win the Stanley Cup. They didn't look long-term at those guys. They don't. You don't sign guys like that long-term. They weren't interested in that. So... Do I think they're rebuilding? No, they don't have anything to rebuild. They're fine. They just have their, they got to have their sights set on somebody else. So either they're trying to leave some cap space for signing a guy like, is it Sam Bennett whose contract is coming up this mm. year or next year? Somebody, someone's contract is coming up. Reinhardt, Reinhardt. No, no, he did just sign. Okay. There was somebody else, I think, that was a major player in this whole thing. So that leaves some room for Reinhardt. It leaves room for somebody else if they want to do that. So I, I think there's just a game plan. I wouldn't be stressed out about it. Losing a couple big defensemen always sucks because defensemen are so few and far between. But the Florida Panthers defensemen weren't what won them the Stanley Cup this year. I'm not knocking on it, but that's not that wasn't like, oh, they had the best defense. When Chicago won the Stanley Cup, it was like, well, they had Duncan Keith and they had like six solid studs. defensemen. Yeah. Studs. That's what won them, right? So I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not saying it's anything to worry about, but eight players is nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of players uh, of regulars, but also who they are. Like Nick Cousins called a rat. I guess we can now call him a rat. Nobody around here wanted to admit it. Uh, when he was called that by 
what's his face on Hockey Night in Canada? Um, Kessler. Kessler, not Kessler, Bieksa. Bieksa. Called Nick Cousins a rat and everybody was upset here. And I said, well, he is a rat. But now he's gone. Lomberg wasn't a rat, but he played the same style. That's a couple hard-nosed guys gone. Yeah, it's it's obviously going to affect them. But if you take a look at, was it Calgary last year? No, it wasn't Calgary. Somebody else didn't make any moves at the deadline. Winnipeg maybe. And look what happened. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So all these teams that have been sitting on the same players for years, like look at the LA Kings. They haven't really made any big moves. They don't have a lot of guys to go. Pittsburgh hasn't made any big moves until Stamkos. Tampa really didn't make any big moves. But yet... The teams like like Florida has been pretty successful in the last few Stanley Cup playoffs. They're making big moves, so they're doing something right. Yeah, well, the thing is a lot of my friends around here that kind of follow the Panthers, and you know the guys that – Chris Sanford is a great example. He's more of a football guy, you know, but he's got his eye on the Panthers. He goes to Panthers games, and he's like, what about these guys they've lost? And I said, they still have the main course. Uh, the Barbrovsky, the Barkov, the Kachuk, all the bobblehead guys are here. They're well, not letting those guys go. It's the side dishes, the sides that are interchangeable. That's the problem with what happens here. People like him who are not huge hockey fans, they hear the Panthers lost eight players and they won the Stanley mm. Cup. What are, oh my God, they're never going to win again. But they have no idea who anybody else that plays on the team is. So... It does it really matter? Like people just get so wound up about stuff that there's no reason. Unless you're the yeah. general manager, chill out. Which, by the way, Bill Zito's proven he knows what he's doing. But there's, you know, I'm writing now for the South Florida Tribune. Every Monday night we do a podcast called Fire Up Florida. And there's a guy on there, George Icorn, who I love. You got to meet him, George Icorn. He lives in Detroit, but he's on our podcast here. And he says, you know, the Red Wings... All those Stanley Cups they've won. Let's just go back to the 90s when they won back-to-back. -back. He's like 18 guys were coming back then. And George prefaced that by saying the salary cap wasn't then what it is now. So it's kind of nuclear to think that you got to bust up a team right after you win a Stanley Cup. That's the game now. It's 100% the game. Yeah. You look at the Oilers. They were like, oh, this guy's gone, this guy's gone, this guy's gone. But every single Oilers fan was like, mm, we see what's coming here. <laughs> And exactly what we predicted is what happened. Why else would, why would you not do that? So it makes perfect sense. You're going to have to give to get some room. And if you want to take the cap hit, whatever, put guys on the long-term injured reserve, you want to kind of dick around with all that stuff, be my guest. But at the end of the day, you still have to answer to the piper when, yeah. when it's all said and done. Pay the pay now or pay later. Yeah. That's what you say. Um, by the way, we do have some leftover viewer questions from last week. I'll get to in a minute. But moving on, of course, the presidential debate was the other night. During that, Paul Bissonnette, Biz Nasty from the NHL on TNT and the Spittin' Chicklets podcast, podcast tweeted, Who cares about the debate? Phil Kessel can't get a goddamn PTO, a professional tryout. <laughs> So it's kind of funny the way that he said it. Phil Kessel, I think we all know him. He's been around the NHL a long time. His pregame meal consists of hot dogs and Diet Coke. Phil can't get a tryout with anybody. To me, I'm sitting here going, you've won three Stanley Cups. My God, you must have played a thousand games by now. It might be time. Why would anybody be offended that Phil Kessel can't get a tryout with anybody? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. Like, I don't, it's just Bissonette trying to get himself in the news. I'm going to, I'm going to outsource Donald Trump here. I'm going <laughs> to be bigger than Donald Trump and the presidential debates on, but I need to get my name back. That's what he does. He's just trying to stir up some shit. If anybody really thinks that Phil Kessel should have a tryout, great. I don't care. I don't, like I said to you on the way here, I don't know what his physique looks like lately. I don't imagine it's anything other than the round tire that he's been for the last 15 years, but who cares? Yeah, well, <laughs> she's not a Biz fan for one. For two, I know Paul Bissonetti. He's been on my other show, uh, hung around him in Arizona. He is not a bad guy. He kind of, with the Spit and Chicklets podcast, which I don't listen to for my own reasons, um, is kind of the voice of the players. Let's be honest. Biz got Mike Babcock fired in Columbus. That is a fact. So we can't say he's not influential. To be honest, when you say with what he's doing here, he's trying to get Phil a tryout. Yeah. Literally. He's, Will it work? I don't know. He's 
he's show. That's what he is. And for whatever reason, the networks down here love that. Mm -hmm. They put him on the air. He says completely inappropriate things. He's obnoxious. I don't get it. People in Canada can't stand him because he's obnoxious. But from a human perspective, he's a pretty good guy conversationally. Sure. It's just, it's all about the obnoxious entertainment. And that's what gets their podcast going. So I guess whatever. I, mean, oh, I, I, I just looked at the antics during the Stanley Cup final, getting blackout drunk the day of the game. And then they going around on the ice asking stupid questions. I'm like, I don't get it. If that's what sells, I, I, I'm i out. Well, they're trying to push the game in America. <clears throat> and you look at the Hockey Night in Canada broadcast. Oof. Nobody acts a fool on there. It's an honor to be on the Hockey Night in Canada broadcast. You have to know what you're talking about. You have to be well-spoken. And nobody's acting like an idiot. Each person on that panel is watching their own game on Saturday. And then at the intermission, they bring their thoughts from each of the games of the Canadian teams that play. Watching TNT or NBC or any of the ones, it's just, it's an absolute embarrassment. Like, I usually mute it. Until Gretzky's on, and then well, the world stops. And then she's like, <laughs> Well. Wayne's on. Wayne's world. Okay. This is the thing I wanted to talk about the most. And believe me, I respect the hell out of this woman. I'm not sure I've told you that lately, if ever. But point six. Better get ready for this. <laughs> Bill Daly is the deputy commissioner of the <laughs> National Hockey League. you know where I'm going with this? Not no clue. He spoke at the NHL Media Day wing this week. And he talked about this narrative that's out there about the states that don't have state income tax, Nevada, Florida, Tennessee, Washington, Texas, and how you must have heard this. All the hockey people I'm around, fans, management, scouts, agents all say it's an unfair advantage down there in Florida. They sign all these guys that don't have to pay tax. Same thing with Texas and Nevada, and that's why the Golden Knights are in the Stanley Cup, and that's why the Lightning are in the Stanley Cup, and the Panthers, I've been hearing it for years. And Bill Daly, just so you know, his response to that this week was there's too many moving parts for us to address this anytime soon, which I think he's right. I want to, like, I, I, I hear it so much, I'm sick of hearing it to the point that I've come out and said, this is just teams that can't figure out how to win. So they're bitching. I think it's a coincidence that the Panthers and the Lightning and the Golden Knights have all made it to the Stanley Cup with this state income tax thing. Because if it was a thing, the Cowboys, the Dolphins, the Raiders, the Texans would all be winning Super Bowls every year. And the Commanders. Uh, it's I, I'm tired of it. Unless you think there's something to oh. it. I'd love to hear what you think. Oh, you're going to hear what I think about that. That's why I asked. Any American team who complains... About that can kiss my ass. The Canadian teams, the Canadian teams, not only do you have to live in the fucking tundra up there, you also have to pay the players in U.S. dollars. So you automatically lose 40 cents on the friggin' dollar every time you pay. So cry me a fucking river if your team cannot figure out how to get players to play where they're in California where there's too high of income tax. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my entire life, and the NHL is full of ridiculous bullshit. But you've heard this. They, it's like that in life. Everybody wants to move to Tennessee. They want to move to Florida because they're not going to get taxed on their fucking retirement. Whatever. Bye. Do it. I don't care. But don't complain that the teams are not. It's an unfair advantage. Who the fuck said that? Probably some stupid ass uh, reporter who has no idea what the hell they're talking about. To the degree that Bill Daly was asked about it on Media Day. Right. Like, I don't go along with it either. But just consider this for a second. And it's not, honestly, just about Canada where they're taxed out the yin-yang. Me as a normal guy was taxed 44% in Canada. But I believe, you tell me if I'm wrong. 59% in California for somebody like in a tax bracket of a Ryan Getzlaff? That I don't know. California is not as bad as Canada. Canada, you're paying over 65% tax when you're in well, a high tax bracket. But what I'm saying is California is kind of similar. It is high tax, but it doesn't compare to, to Canada. To no, Canada. no, no, no. But my point on that is this. Like Ryan Getzlaff who I think we all know, captain of the Ducks, played there for, I think, 17 years, won a Stanley Cup, has moved out of California. He's a good friend of mine, now living in Tennessee for tax reasons, and you, everybody's leaving California, right? But his brother 
is a very close friend of mine, and he is the financial advisor of Ryan. Not to get too far down the rabbit hole on this, but Chris, this is his brother's name, and he just said, think about this. Everybody sees Ryan making $10 million a year in California. His take-home is $4.9 million, mm-hmm. right? And he goes, and if, so if you want to know why these multi-millionaire athletes are broke a couple years later, they make $10 million, so they spend $10 million. Right. But a guy like Ryan was smart enough to get a financial advisor. Even before Chris was a financial advisor, mm-hmm. Ryan had one because he's not an idiot. He played 17 years there. You didn't see you didn't hear him complain for one second no. about paying tax. It's part of lot. Whoever asked that is clearly an idiot. See this. I'm not shocked we would agree on this, although we don't always. But I just I'm so tired. I hear it all the time. That's stupid. And it drives me nuts. OK, we've put that to bed. I want your take on this. Another burning question. There's a couple here, but it could be like, you can word it this way. Will the Florida Panthers make a Stanley Cup final for a third consecutive year? And dovetailing on that, the sports books all say an Oilers-Panthers Stanley Cup final is the most likely combination. That's what the prognosticators are saying. Do you go along with that? And how would you feel if that was a, if that was a thing, a rematch? I'm not making the prediction. I didn't ask you to. They are. Um, If it happened, what would you think yeah i can't i can't do another you don't want to go there no i should have been in a coma for two weeks this whole time but i feel like didn't they predict that at one point last year before the playoffs was it predicted that edmonton and florida were going to be in the final i think i told you it was going to happen there was a okay there was a prediction i believe from the betting world i think the odds makers that it was going to happen something like that so there were a lot of people that said it was going to happen. To be to be totally truthful, I didn't really feel like Edmonton necessarily was going to make the Stanley Cup. I felt like they could. But again, as I said all last year, there's so many strong teams in the West that you have to beat to get there. So and it's not going to be any different this year. Yeah. Like, don't forget about how strong some of those teams are. I don't even know what an NHL coach makes these days. It's got to be, I would think, at least a million. I, I don't know what Paul Maurice gets. But this is going to be a tough coaching job for him. Year one was difficult for him because he changed all the systems. He didn't change the culture, but you know what I'm saying. We were there and we watched it. Last year, I don't feel like it was that difficult because they had that fire burning in them that they lost mm-hmm. in the Stanley Cup before. Mm-hmm. They had that motivation all year. I don't feel like Paul Maurice had to say a whole lot. This year, it's going to be tough. I, I, I believe it will be. It's always tougher to defend. Yeah. For sure. And last year, like you said, they had that fire in their belly. I don't think the Panthers were the best team in the NHL last year. I said that the whole year. But they played the best to win, or however you want to word it. But there, there is. There's definitely something different. Even I think Bill Lindsay said it when he was on the show here one day. When you lose, there's that fire that you just can't. Right. Yeah. But now, so they won. So what do they say? It's hard. Was it some boxer said it's hard to stay hungry when you're sleeping on satin sheets? Or you never heard that? Or heavy is the head that wears the crown? Same thing. To be the hunter versus the hunted. They're not the hunter anymore. Yeah, and hockey's a lot different than it used to be when teams were winning back to back or winning, you know, four out of five or four in a row or whatever. It was just a different game. Guys weren't dumping off eight players in the off season and then picking up eight more. The teams. You know, even even in the 80s and some of the 90s, the teams were very similar year to year, especially if they were oh, yeah. winning. They just weren't making it. But again, the salary cap, it is what it is. We, uh, we're not getting to the end. Well, I got three more of our questions, I guess my questions, and then your special treat, Serena's two burning questions. If you wanted to get inside that warp mind, you're going to at the end. <laughs> See what how she thinks. On the spot, by the way. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my eighth question. This is actually a leftover from last week's show from a, a viewer. I think is I think it was Kim. If I have the name wrong, I apologize. But he said, "Which Panthers newcomer are you looking forward to seeing the most?" I'll defer. You don't defer. You don't need to answer this unless you have an answer for it. For me, it's Nate Schmidt, and it's because he's a former Vegas Golden Knight. He was one of the original misfits, an original Vegas Golden Knight. I was kind of crestfallen when. They let him go because uh, the Golden Knights were my team for about five minutes. A couple, couple of years, actually. <laughs> like every team in yeah. the NHL. <laughs> I enjoyed them. And I liked the way Nate Schmidt played. I was upset he went to Vancouver. It didn't work out there. Then he went to Winnipeg. didn't work out there. I'm hoping that it works out here for Nate Schmidt. Uh, he's a hell of a hockey player. You're really going to like him. He reminds me a little bit of Oliver ekman Larson, but not as flashy. 
do you know who the Panthers' newcomers are? Mm Because the names, yeah, so we'll move on. You don't even need to. Point nine for our Canadians watching. We talk about the tax up there in Canada. Somebody wrote in to my show, the daily talk show I do, the Rod Peterson Show. Today, you asked how the show went. The guy blamed Tommy Douglas. (laughs) The father of Medicare. You guys all say it down here. You guys have socialized medicine up there free. (laughs) Yes, Tommy Douglas invented it. He's the asshole that's taxing these people 60%. It's it's not the Gary Bettman curse. It's the Tommy Douglas curse. And that means nothing (laughs) to you Floridians, but it means you get it. (laughs) Leave it up to a Canadian to blame Tommy Douglas for this. For those of you guys who don't know, Tommy Douglas founded Socialized Medicine. He was the premier of Saskatchewan long before Rod and I were even a twinkle in the eye. <laughs> but he he's what, you know, where Socialized Medicine came from, came all across in the, the 50s. country. Whatever. Right. Also, fun fact, Kiefer Sutherland's grandfather is from that same place. Yes. He is? Tommy Douglas is? How did you not know that? Tommy Douglas's daughter married, what's his name, Sutherland. Uh, all I know is Julia Roberts was in Weyburn one day at the 7-Eleven and people saw her. Because <laughs> she was dating Kiefer Sutherland who was there to Kay. see his grandma. Yeah, no, Kiefer Sutherland's yeah. grandfather was Tommy Douglas. Now, maybe I didn't mom- know that, but I moved on. Okay. Uh, so do you still think the Gary Bettman curse is real? This is my question. It's been now 31 years since a N- Canadian NHL teams won a Stanley Cup. Canadians blame the commissioner, Gary Bettman. That also probably is a rhetorical question. I'm feeling like you do. No, it's not. The, it's not a Gary Bettman curse. Okay. I would not give that fool that much credit. <laughs> okay. It ain't him. It's not. The Canadian teams could have and probably should have won over the last 30 plus years. I was sitting 100%. here getting to the end of my 10 burning questions where it was getting a little dry. So we'll get to Serena's in a second. Not dry, but this is more the questions you people talk about than me. And over <laughs> under on Connor Bedard's points this year. I think last oh. season as a rookie, he played 68 games because he broke his jaw, if you recall. And I believe he had 61 points. So he was just a shade under a point a game, which was my prediction that he would be a point a game. That's if he stayed healthy or whatever. He was almost that. It's simple. You're going to play 82 games? Let's say that he does. And I can't wait for Connor Bedard to come through here with Sunrise. We saw him last year when they were here, and it was fun. I will say 80 points. That's my over-under on Connor Bedard. Uh, I, I don't know. He's going to have another year under his belt. It it was It's hard because I always felt like there was a lot of hype around him And I really thought, yes, he's an extremely talented player, but watching him play live last year, he had so much to learn. He had so much experience he needed to get under his belt. And unfortunately, it's so unfortunate that he got injured, but he's the type of player that is going to pick up on his surroundings quickly. I'm going to say he, I don't think he'll get a full 80. It's hard to say, but you got to also look at the team around him. Chicago's not exactly burning holes in the net right now. Serena says under 80, I say over. We watched that game with Dale Talon, right? And Dale said, he's like, that poor bastard. He's drawing all the attention wow. from the other teams, right? right? At 18. And Dale knows Chicago better than most people. Than anybody, yeah. What are you going to, I mean, you can't put that much emphasis on one person to be the next face of the league. Like, give it a rest. And yet they are. Yeah. Okay. The last two burning questions come from Serena Dawn. I asked her this afternoon, what are the top two that come to your mind for the NHL entering the season? Your first one was, how good is Nashville going to be? Answer your own question. I think that they're not going to do as well as everybody thinks they will. It never happens like that. Every single team that has tried to Mm. stack their team... It's You have to build this team. Look at the Panthers. Yes, they lost some guys. They got some guys, whatever. But they built on the heart and soul of that team. You can't just dump your entire team and get a bunch of superstars and expect it to work out. It never does. It's They might have a good run, but I don't think Nashville is going to do what everybody thinks well, they will. Well, everybody's going to be watching them. Oh, because, they'll be fantastic. Because of stamp goes for mm-hmm. one and for two. They did make the playoffs last year. Let's not forget, they got up 3-1 on Vancouver in round one. They could have knocked them off. So they weren't bad last season. They were a playoff team. So how much better can they get? you got a motivated Steven Stamkos, Ryan O'Reilly. They were one of the most active teams in free agency. they got one of the best goalies in the NHL in Soros and one of the best GMs, I think, will agree in Barry Trotz. Mm. I think they're going to be 
probably Western Conference final good. This Not is joking. this is the thing. This is how I look at them. They have never had a crappy team for the most part, right? They've been pretty solid year after year after year, but they remind me so much of Washington before they finally won the Stanley Cup. They just they have good teams, they just can't pull the trigger. And I don't know what it is. It's like over the years, how Vancouver hasn't won a Stanley Cup at one point or another. They've had teams that are talented enough to do it. They just didn't do it. It's just there's more to it than just stacking your team. We watched Rod and I with our own eyeballs in 2001. We watched the Regina Pats, our beloved Regina Pats, stack their team to Mm. play in the Memorial Cup. And they lost. And they had the best team at the Memorial Cup because it was stacked. Can't do that just at the end of the season or for one year and make that yeah, work. We didn't have goaltending. Florida did it last year and it worked. So Florida didn't stack their team like Nashville is. Um, Nashville stacking. Oh, Let's be I, honest. I, I could. I would have to go down and run the numbers. I can do that. We don't have time to do that right now. But I feel like Nash, uh, Florida did stack their team. Adding Tarasenko did that. Adding Akposa did that. At the deadline, they stacked it. Not in the summer. But at the deadline, they did. Yeah, but those guys, those guys obviously helped, but they weren't like, okay, these guys are going to take us Big to the promised items, land. Yeah. Right, like I think Nashville's expecting. And then this is a good one, too, from Serena. She says, direct quote. <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to say what I is actually Is Buffalo say? going to keep shitting the bed? They got a new coach. They brought Lindy Ruff back. They say that you can never go home. Lindy Ruff's gone home. They said they wanted a hard-ass... Not players coach. And the Sabres hired Lindy Ruff. Is it going to work? What do you think? Yes. Wow. Yes. Because I've always been a fan of Lindy Ruff. And he's had some pretty good success in Buffalo. He's he's the kind of guy that they need. These coaches, I feel, in the NHL are in a really tough spot right now. Because if they look at a guy the wrong way, it's going to be all over social media, the whole fucking Me Too movement or whatever the hell you want to call it. There's slaps on the wrist. There's people getting fired, people getting... The coaches can't do anything anymore without getting in trouble. But a guy like Lindy Ruff ain't going to play like that. I think he's going to be great. They have so many young, talented players there, and they just they just need a switch. They just need a switch. I personally feel, as an Oilers fan, that that's what the Oilers have been missing for a long time. Yes, they had a great coach this year that got them halfway through the season and turned things around. But is it going to work long term? I don't know. I think Lindy Ruff is just a badass. I like him. Well, it's interesting. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Is he a coach's, a player's coach, or is he a hard ass? I don't know. He looks like a hard ass. We shouldn't. But know. he survived for a long time. And if you're a real jerk, you couldn't. Now, Matthew Barnaby would run him over if he saw him in the street. And Barney's a really good friend of mine. Uh, so it is what it is. I don't really know whether it'll work or not. But I did hear an interview this summer. I don't think I told you this on NHL radio with Jeff Skinner, longtime Sabre, signed with the Oilers. And in that interview, he goes, I feel bad for all the coaches that got fired in Buffalo when I was there because it's the player's fault. It wasn't the coach's fault. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe he admitted it because most of them won't. Is Lindy Ruff's going to change that? Yes. Anytime you just you're shaking things up. You know, I think that was the whole point here when they hired Joel Quenville. They're like, "Okay, we're going to get somebody here who doesn't play. And obviously, I think that would have, to be honest, would have worked out the same way. I think that this is a different environment, though. It's a different environment. Paul Maurice thrives here. He didn't thrive in Winnipeg. He was over it. Matthew hmm. Kachuk thrives here. He didn't thrive in Calgary. There's a, it's a different market. In Buffalo, they're pissed off. They've had a team for a long time there, and their fans are ready for something and tired of being the Chicago White Sox of the NHL. So I think just shaking it up a little bit, it's not going to hurt. I think it's going to help. There you go, everybody. Ten burning questions plus two bonus from Serena. Anything else from you before we let these good people go? That's all. All right, everybody. Thank you, Betty Boy. We'll see you next week, everybody, right here on Florida's favorite hockey show, the Cats and Bolts podcast. Nice and tight.